Next, a big one that many people may not be aware of is supply chain attacks. So a supply chain attack is an attack on an organization by targeting less secure elements in a supply network, right? Much like watering hole attacks we've talked about before, where an attacker might go out and try to figure out uh, the executives of a company may visit this site. They might like golfing or they might like fishing or whatever. So their company is too secure, but we're going to attack the fishing website or the golfing website. And then when they come to visit that, we'll catch them through the side door, basically. Well, supply chain attacks, it's a similar methodology. So it's an advanced persistent threat, typically, not always, but typically. And really the goal is to target victims further down the supply chain network. So think of it as finding the weakest link in the chain. And then we're going to infect that piece of the chain. We're going to break that piece of the chain, inject malware, inject something that's capturing information or allowing us to get into the network further up the supply chain where it may be not as secure. And then as those pieces of the product filter their way down to the customer or to the company we want to actually interact with or infect, right, gain access to, they're already now using tainted equipment or parts or software and so forth. So an example of that might be a point of sale malware, right? We can infect point of sale terminals. Another example would be malware or hardware installed on computer equipment or network gear before it reaches the target company. You may or may not have heard of the different breaches they found where some networking equipment and some computers were actually intercepted before they actually reached the customer company. So bad actors were able to intercept those machines, install malware, or install physical components on the motherboards of those routers and the motherboards of those computers that were able to phone home. So they put it back in the box, made it look all well and good, shipped on to its final destination. Those pieces of equipment were then taken out, put into play, right, put into production, and lo and behold, they start phoning home and giving information back to the command and control center, right, where the hackers are stationed, or it's allowing back doors into that network and so forth, right? So it's very, very important that we manage and we understand where those weak links might be and that we take precautions as necessary. So another example of that might be, here we have a third party ad company, right? They're, they're an advertising company that deals with a lot of different customers. So as you might imagine, they could be a weak link in the chain. So in this example, they actually create some components that live on e-commerce websites. They have some JavaScript and some other things that they're going to push out to e-commerce websites to deliver ads and marketing collateral and so forth, right? So there's a number of different websites that this stuff goes to. Well, an attacker, if he's able to compromise that third-party ad company and inject some malware into that company unbeknownst to them, when they push that information or push that code out to these e-commerce websites, well, they all have customers that they deal with, right? These customers are interacting with the e-commerce websites. They're putting in orders and so forth, ordering things, credit card information, personal details. Well, those things are now infected, right? As you can imagine. And so every time that they have a transaction, that skimmed transaction data is then sent to the attacker and he's able to basically gather all that information, personal details, credit card information, all that good stuff. So the e-commerce website itself may have been secure or the company itself may have been secure, but guess what? The third party ad company, right? Which is part of the supply chain in this example, they were the weak link in the chain. The attacker was able to compromise them and basically hit four or five different stores at once with the same code, skimming all those transactions from all those customers and having it sent back to his command center.